All right, next up we have Michael Seiger. He is going to talk on information obesity and how to live a healthier life. And he did tell me that in his spare time he spends a lot of time on Twitter, so presumably he's learned how to filter his Twitter feeds. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 33% of adult Americans suffer from obesity. It's, uh, obesity is a medical condition where a person is severely overweight. It can take years off your life and create many different health problems. What doctors tell us is that obesity can be fixed in many cases with proper diet and exercise, minimizing empty calorie snacks like candy and processed food and maximizing nutrient-rich foods like fruits and vegetables. And exercise, of course, burns calories. Obesity is an epidemic. It's the leading preventable cause of death worldwide, and many consider it to be the most significant public health concern of the 21st century. But there's a parallel epidemic growing in massive proportions. More than 90% of adult Americans suffer from information obesity. Okay, that's not real, I made it up, but it could be true. Information obesity occurs when your mind, not your body, consumes too many calories and doesn't get enough exercise. It started dawning on me a few months ago that what I read on any given day was mostly useless, and yet I'd go through my daily ritual of reading my newspapers and my blogs every day. In addition, my phone would ring, beep, and buzz throughout the day depending on what it was trying to tell me. Computer notifications would pop up telling me I've got 14 unread emails, three people have circled me on Google, whatever that means. Facebook would email me and tell me, hey, you haven't seen you in a while. You're missing a lot of the cool things your friends have been up to. So all of the blogs, the Facebook posts, the notifications, they're like information snack foods. They're easy to grab and quick to eat, and at the end of the day, they don't provide much nutritional value. Too much information is masquerading as health food. You'll find very few people that are ob physically obese if they were to exercise regularly. And likewise, you'll find very few people that are information obese if they look to original sources of information and drew their own conclusions rather than relying on what other people tell them. Really, the whole idea is to maintain health. A healthy information lifestyle leads to fantastic results. More time to be productive in the things you want to do. More time to be present with your family in mind and body, not just in body. And a clear mind to focus on the things that are important in your life. There's a five-step process for creating an, a healthy information lifestyle. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. We're gonna go over five steps right now. The first is define the problem and admit you have a problem. Or maybe you don't, in which case it's only about two and a half minutes till the next presentation. <laughs> to do, um, there's uh, the, the first, once you've defined the problem, the next step is to measure the information you're taking in. You can't manage what you can't measure. Just like if you're going on a food diet, writing down everything you eat throughout the day is enough to open your eyes to what's being consumed. To do this with information, I use a program called RescueTime.com. There's a competing product, product called Time Doctor. Both are computer programs you install, software programs you install on your computer that track exactly how you spend your time on your computer. Or you can simply take out a sheet of paper and a pencil, write down 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. in half an hour increments, and write down all the information you consume throughout the day. The third step is to analyze all this data. Now that you have it, you need to think about it. How much time do you spend on Facebook and Google Plus throughout the day? How varied is your information consumption? Do you consume too much of the wrong types of information? Every week, Rescue Time emails me and says, this is how you spent your last week. If I'm spending an hour a day on peoplemagazine.com, it's probably not a best use of my time. And if I'm trying to vary my information consumption, spending some time on Huffington Post may need some moderating time on foxnews.com. Yes, I can see my wife scowling at me over there. There are four steps to improve your information consumption. I've got a bunch of ways that you can do that. Here are three. The first is to remove the unhealthy calories from your diet that are full of fat and sugar. You know what I'm talking about. It's the stalking of your exes on Facebook. It's the buying of the National Enquirer at the shopping store. Just don't buy them unsubscribed from the service. Number two, consider healthier ways to consume information. We all get a ton of email newsletters every day. There's usually only one kernel of good information in them. Unsubscribe from them. Follow them on Twitter. You get everything in 140 characters or less. Number three, spend time reading original sources of information. If the Shoreline Management Program is going to affect your rights as a homeowner, go read the original program document and make your own conclusions. Don't just rely on what the papers tell you and somebody else's summary. In other words, don't just eat the, uh, don't just eat ho-hos and ding-dongs. I'm saying try some Brussels sprouts, eat some kale. 
The fifth and final step is to control. You need to make sure now that you've improved your diet, you don't fall back into the abyss. I set up infoobesity.com. You can go there, watch this Ignite pitch all embedded in there. Every quarter, revisit your information lifestyle. Are, are there new alerts that are popping up in your system? Are there new technologies that are vying for your attention? Go back and measure, analyze, and improve your lifestyle. And with that, I thank you for your time.